कंजनजंग काम लगो कमाइलो काम लगो कमाइलो योग समगंग तके सरो रामाइलो कहे रे नी मागे Kangla, a high altitude mountain pass at a height of 16373 feet lies in between the Kang peak on the left and an unnamed peak on its right among the remote and rocky terrains of the Sikkim and Nepal border Although this pass has faded into oblivion It was a part of an important ancient salt route. The Tibetans had salt in plenty in the high altitude salt lakes, but they could not produce sufficient crops because of the barrenness. On the contrary, the Sikkimese used to produce enough crops, but they needed salt. The traders solved the problem by carrying out trade in a barter system of salt and crops. However, these traders had to follow remote and high altitude passes under hostile and extreme conditions to evade the huge taxes imposed upon them by the Sikkimese rulers. The great botanist and explorer Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker had documented the route in his famous Himalayan journals of 1854 he himself had crossed the kangla to enter the yalong valley of nepal for the salt traders it was a journey of 10 days crossing four snowed passes all above 15000 feet from yuksom they used to cross kangla in two days After entering Nepal, they used to cross three more high altitude passes, Chunjarma, Nango, and Kangla Chen Pass, in the following five days to finally reach Tibet. Upon entering Tibet, they had to cross two snowy passes in the next three days to finally reach the marketplace of Tashi Rokpa. Team We the Bohemians embarked upon the adventure of exploring the ancient salt route up to Kangla in Sikkim. The squadron comprised Ovik, Nilanjan and Rakesh. The trek started from Yuksu, the first capital of Sikkim. They followed the conventional Gochela trek route up to Zongri in the first two days, slogged through the Kanchenjunga National Park amidst lush greenery, rare wildlife, chirping of birds, the rhythmic sound of the meandering river was enthralling. Shoka was chosen as the campsite after the first day's trek. From Shoka, the trail through the rhododendron thickets led the team to Zongri, the last point of communication with the outside world. From Zongri, the trail to the right leads to Goechala, the one straight is along the Rathungla. However, in this venture, the track along the left would be followed. The second day's camp was established on a large grassland called Doring, about a kilometer above Zongri, quite isolated, almost at the foot of Black Kabru. Thank you.
In 1899, British mountaineer and geographer Douglas Freshfield, in his round Kanchenjunga exploration, used the pass Kangla to enter Sikkim from the Yalung Valley in Nepal. Three decades later, in 1930, during the unsuccessful attempt to climb Kanchenjunga, famous British climber Frank Smith, along with mountaineers from four nations, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Great Britain, followed this route and entered Nepal, crossing the Kangla. The next morning, Zongri Top offered breathtaking views of the Great White Mountains right in front. Doring looked exceptionally beautiful under the pristine blue sky of the early morning. Leaving behind such a calm and tranquil piece of land was not easy. However, the team had to proceed and proceed fast. After half an hour, the team encountered a beautiful gorge with a stream flowing rapidly some hundred yards below. A hike of about a couple of hours downhill through the bushes and thickets brought them close to the stream to a place called Dauban. After crossing the stream, it was an uphill trek through the long and steep section on the opposite bank. Finally, the day's slog ended upon reaching Rolepthang campsite on the bank of Thegaplachu. The four days trail went beside the stream of Thegaplachu. By then, the team was above the tree line. Yellow grass in the late autumn, a few thorny shrubs and rocks were all that paved the entire trail. A few rockfall zones had to be negotiated. The color of the mountains in these hidden parts of the Sikkim Himalayas was mesmerizing. The river scattered into multiple rivulets was accompanying them. They had to walk across the shallow streamlets jumping from one rock to another. A gradual ascent on the opposite bank brought them to their campsite at Chorpangchang. The most significant part of the journey started the following morning before sunrise. Today, the team would approach the Kangla, the mountain pass at 16,374 feet the salt traders used to cross to enter Nepal. On my back, there is Kang Peak and on my uh, front, the peak is unnamed. Earlier, the salt traders used to cross, cross this pass from Yuksam, Sikkim to Nepal up to Tasirukpa in Tibet. It took more than four days for the team to reach Kangla, a world of lifeless rocks and boulders. The only sign of life they witnessed was a single Fenkamal flower they suddenly came across. It is quite astonishing how these ancient traders used to move along such treacherous sections and managed to cross the pass within two days from Yuksam with yaks carrying loads. Shorachandra Dash, a brilliant Bengali engineer, was sent as a British spy to Tibet twice, in 1879 and 1881, to gather knowledge of the mysterious kingdom. During his second foray into Tibet, Das passed through these remote terrains of Sikkim to enter into Nepal from where he reached Tibet. In 1903, Lord Curzon, the head of the British Indian government of that time, attacked Tibet under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Francis Young Husband and was successful in defeating the Tibetans. The entire operation was successfully executed only because of the minute and detailed information of the demography, politics, society, culture, strength and weaknesses of the Tibetans brought 
by Sharad Chandra Das. Leaving Churpangchang behind, the team followed the right bank of the riverbed below. It was a long steep ascent up to the Kokling Pass. It took about 45 minutes to climb the steep wall and reach the pass. A relatively less steep descent was followed by a slog through sections of shallow streams. The gradual change in altitude was accompanied by a change in the surrounding landscape as well. Kokling would be a day's destination. While returning from Kangla, the team retraced the path following the great Sarachandra Das, but in the reverse direction. Das approached this region from Lakshmi Pokhri, Gomathang side, which they would adopt while returning from the pass. From Kokling, the trek started under the bright early morning sunshine the following day. It was all greenery again. The trail was narrow and mostly through the thorny bushes and junipers. A multiple number of spurs had to be crossed before coming down near the stream of Yang Ship. From Yang Ship, a moderately steep ascent led to a beautiful forest of silver fir. Finally, the team reached the exquisite campsite of Gomathan. From Gomathan, it was a steep ascent alongside the stream, rushing down the slopes to meet the shallow river below. They took a left detour to bid adieu to the stream, but the gradient of the trail continued to increase further until they reached the foot of another ridge. On the opposite of the ridge was the holy lake, Lakshmi Pokri, covered by a thick layer of clouds. The team proceeded further to reach their campsite just below the pass, Kagbirla. In the proximity, there exists a pair of lakes called Sikkim Jumle Pokri. One is known as Ram Pokri and the other Lakhan Pokri. There are two mountain passes on the two sides of Dafibi Top. The first is Kagbilla, named after a crow, and the other is Dafibilla, which got its name from the Himalayan monal Dafe. They crossed the Kagbilla in the morning. It was the right detour after crossing the pass through the rocky terrain. It took about 20 to 25 minutes to reach Dafibilla in the midst of the clouds. Thick layers of clouds remained and persistent rain continued for the next two days. The group halted at Nayapatal on their eighth night before trekking down to Sankhola, the last point on the ninth day. Ki dara ma bhanjang ve sam phiri ri 
レッサンピリリーレッサンピリリーウレラジャオキダラマバンジャンレッサンピリリーエクナレバンドゥビナレバンドゥミガレタケコミガレマイレタケコハイナマヤレタケコレッサンピリリー Some PDD, who did a donkey?